Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Jack of All Trades. I got another episode for you today on how to solve the problem of a double row timing chain interfering with a fuel pump arm. I've got some really interesting inside views of inside the, the actual engine to show you what takes place inside and I've got three methods here to help fix this issue. Stay tuned. Alright, so you just rebuilt your engine, you put a new timing chain on, you got one of those fancy double row timing chains because they're real strong and cool and they have uh, different options that you can go with these days compared to the uh, the old factory skinny ones. And uh, so you get in there, don't think about what you're doing, you line everything up, and next thing you know, uh, crank the engine over and you hear some grinding okay and that's what what that is is that's this, this fuel pump arm here this actuator arm and that's going to send a bunch of chips into your engine and that's that's not going to be good at all and it's going to cause a lot of damage so uh over the years people since these double row timing chains have been out people have come up with ideas to uh solution that okay we're going to go through three of them here today uh if i mention one that or if, if I don't mention one that you know of, then please put a comment in the in the comment section below and let us know. I'm sure that would help other people. So uh, the three options that we have here, and, and these could, you know, th this is for a Buick 455. Uh, you could have this issue uh, with, with another type of engine, another year, another brand. This could vary for, you know, several different makes and models. So this is just for the Buick 455, but you could adapt it to your specific engine. So uh, what some people will do here is, is they'll take measurements inside the engine. Uh, you know, just keep in mind, you do have a gasket as well that you have to measure. But they'll take a measurement. They'll see how deep that chain is in there. And then, you know, they'll, they'll do the same measurement on this pump housing. And then, you know, they'll mark off an area one inch wide. And then they'll come in with a grinding stone or a file of some sort. And they'll grind this area down make it smooth clean it off and then you know apply some heavy grease here stick it back in the system back back into the, the timing cover bolt it down to then take it back off and see if there's any interference there the the heavy grease that you put on there will will indicate whether there's been any kind of touching that's one way to do it a lot of guys don't like to grind on these pumps on this this is my demo pump this is a really old one as you can see from the rivet uh the rivet plate there that they don't put on them anymore but uh, that's one way you can do it. You can take those measurements or you can just simply apply some heavy grease across his arm and st install it forward of the chain and then up against the chain, bolt it down tight and then pull it out and see where the disrupted oil is or the grease and then just, just do that back and forth until it's done. So that's one way that people solve it. Uh, it's, it's common, it's pretty easy and uh, it works. Uh, but some people don't like to grind on this, you know, the, the steel, it does, uh, you know, lose some structural integrity, I guess, with the grinding. So another way to do it is, is the, the actual pump sets in the engine like this, okay? It's on the driver's side. And you need it to move away from the timing chain, which is forward, okay? Something else you can do is you can grind the back of each one of these holes... The mounting holes by 1 16th of an inch okay so you could measure this hole and grind it 1 16th of an inch all the way around on both of them okay now keep in mind it's the aft or the rear portion of that hole so that it can slide forward okay so you do that you use a rat tail file something like this get in there grind it out or use a dremel tool like i've got here grind that out and that's going to make that clearance just enough where it doesn't touch okay and that's actually what i plan to do to my engine to get it to clearance okay and i'm going to go ahead and do that quick grinding and show you the clearance that it makes uh but first off next off i want to show you the third way okay and this is not as a common but if you have a type of pump in which the arm can be removed some of the the fancy aftermarket ones uh, that are high performance you can remove this arm now this one is uh, riveted in and it's not going anywhere so um, But if you can anyway if you can take this arm off then what you can actually do is you can take a belt sander okay, and You can actually bevel 
this housing, this facing, you can bevel it about 20 degrees back, okay? And what that will do is when you bevel it, it'll cause this to, to flow forward just a little bit, okay? And that's all you need to do is have it to go off a little bit so that it's not touching that timing chain anymore. Now, if you're concerned about, uh, you know, the cam and the actual fuel pump lobe that's on there, that lobe is about an inch thick, okay? So you have some room to move on that, uh, and it'll still work just fine. So anyway, uh, we're going to get to doing some grinding here, and I'll show you some inside views of what it looks like uh, afterwards, and we can see, uh, you know, the difference that it makes. Let's go ahead and get this uh, this test fit and see how it works out. All right, as you can see there in the uh, the little video, there is no longer uh, the ch the clearance issue with the chain and the arm. They're no longer touching, so this actually worked pretty good. Uh, I found that uh, if you wanted to put a screwdriver here between the, the actual block and the pump uh, and push it out as you're screwing it in, it kind of helps keep it away. Uh, that's what I did here. But anyway, uh, hopefully this video was able to help you. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, hit that like button down below. It does help the channel out. And uh, if you want to see more of this content about the, the Buick as I put it together and get it ready for the, the car or any of the DIY stuff I normally do, hit the subscribe button and you'll see some more of my regular videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Goodbye.